Okay, hopefully this is higher quality than the last video. Uh, so, Andre. Um, it's a slight correction, because I was kind of rambling in the last video. Um, but bas basically, you have uh, two main numbers you care about. So the c there's, there's the frame rate, our frame rate, and then like our game thread frame rate. And then we have the... Um, uh, we do have the callback callback frequency. It's not really a, the same like this. It's not the same thing as like a sample rate, but it's got its own frequency. And we want to make sure that we're not trying to process more commands at like a, commands at a higher frequency than that that is running at. But um, we can get pretty high without decreasing our callback buffer size. Um, and it could be that decreasing the... I'm not sure exactly what happened last time with the callback buffer size going down. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, this doesn't really make sense. Um, but uh, what we can do... What you sort of have to... Really, your big limiting factor is still going to be your game thread frame rate. And really what you want to do is you want to just adjust your... your gunshot buffer size to accommodate that. So... What you have to think about is kind of like Nyquist theorem. We're trying to represent, um, you know, we we need an update at a certain particular rate, and that update, uh, you know, the, when we say, hey, you need to fire X number of shots, that's our buffer size. Uh, you need to fire X number of shots. That update rate has to be much smaller than our game thread frame rate. All right. Because what what it is is we need to actually get we need to get those callbacks on our buffering system at a frequency which allows us close enough to the timing that we need to enqueue the next set. And if our game thread frame rate is too low compared to how how much we need to how how frequently we need to update our um, our enqueuing, the number of shots we're enqueuing, that's sort of the balance that we're, we're struggling with. So, um, so here I have a really large queue. Okay. So I've gone in and I've updated my little thing. So I can basically say, I'm going to queue a whole bar's worth of, of gunshots. And my bar is going to be you know, X beats long. And the bar, the reason I chose, I ended up joining, I, I was originally doing beats, but I think the bar is going to give me more options because I have, because uh, I, I can, I can do, like, there's no limit to how big my bar can be, how dense my bar can be, I should say. And so here I have an, an eight, four bar. And my um, gunshot frequency uh, rhythm division my beat division is 30 second notes okay so um so that means i can technically enqueue up to 64 gunshots so i've increased my voice count threshold to accommodate so here's my th here so here let's do here's my 15 okay pretty good Here's my 30. Here's my 60. Here's my 120. I've got some stray ones. Those could be due to uh, frame drift. You know, let's try for 240. You know, that, that could just be me hitting my voice threshold, right? Um, so that one, that there would be another balance that I have to increase my, um, you know, go to my project settings, whatever. 
let's go like you know let's just go nuts here why not let's see how far it will take us i don't know why i do it on both of these i still have low buffer size um 1024 so let's see that helped <laughs> Let's just see what we can do. Let's try for 480. Let's see what happens. So, there's some stray ones. Hard to say exactly what's causing it. You know, it could be frame drift. And so I'm just not up. You know, it could be that, that there's some, some sort of drift in, in my update. But this is absolutely a, a stress test. I wouldn't expect anyone to do this. You know, this is insane. I mean, this is this might as well just be a synthesizer, right? But yeah, if we can go back down to 100. We can do it. We can do it if we buff. We just have to buffer enough of them. Just from a sound design perspective, I don't think it's very compelling, you know, just to have one individual shot. Because I think, because you have to think about, the, you know, from a sound design perspective, uh, you know, from tech, pers tech perspective, it's interesting. But from a sound design perspective, it gets boring. And I think the reason is because when you have a gunshot, like a gun, um, you know, it's, it's a mechanical process. But like any like machine even though the main mechanism is operating at a high frequency you know even audible frequency there are other components inside the gun or the machine that uh will operate sometimes at a lower frequency and so there will there'll be there there will possibly be mechanisms that are actually at a lower frequency so it's not actually everything not so that not everything you're hearing is is from a is like high frequency and the other thing is that you get um you actually get like resonant vibration in various parts of the machine's systems which will create you know rattling or other noises that operate at a lower frequency or a, or like a subharmonic frequency, and so um, so I don't think it's an it's enough to just say hey here's my here's my machine gun shot sound, and that machine gun was recorded in isolation in, as like one shot, whereas if you listen to a machine gun, you know, uh, repeating you'll actually hear a uh, sort of other mechanical like harmonics that that are subharmonic that are operating at a lower frequency and and um you know phasing at a lower frequency than your gunshots your actual like report so you know that's that's something to think about as well as you sort of like go into sort of crazy territory. And that's why, you know, uh, authoring a, a really good gunshot loop is painstaking because you're also trying to capture those sub, those subharmonic frequencies. And um, so, yeah, so this is not like, so even if we were doing this, we'd still want to have like layers, like subharmonic layers. And the voice count complexity just explodes um, insanely. Uh, so I, I'm not a fan of this approach for like really high frequency machine guns. But, you know, I think if you've got like an assault rifle that is of reasonable you know, frequency, at least this way, you know, you can get consistent. 
consistent gunfire. So I think Quartz is going to be really good for that. But I don't think that it's worth, you know, us going into the sort of like... Like that kind of high frequency territory. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that was interesting or helpful. Uh, I'm in queuing, obviously, a lot of gunshots uh, to, to ensure that I hit the, that timing um, without fail. And so, you know, going, dropping, and, and, and it, you know, um, your update rate is, uh, once again, just to reiterate, going back to your frame rate, you know, some division of your frame rate is going to be like an, a, a, the perfect update frequency. So it's going to be a smaller number. So the frequency at which you, you tr attempt or you enqueue your shots. So let's say you're using a smaller buffer size. You know, say like you're just doing a, a round robin thing, like two gunshots. Or you're like doing some sort of three gunshot or four gunshot thing. Um, I would probably stick, by the way, I would probably stick to like base two numbers. Just because it's going to be a lot more easier. It's going to be a lot easier to do the math. But, um, you know, your update rate is going to have to be some division smaller, um, probably like two or four times smaller than your, um, your game frame rate, uh, to ensure the timing. Uh, because what happens is you still need to get that, that, uh, hit back from, from the, um, from the quartz system, that delegate that's like, okay, you're ready to enqueue the next set. And that has to happen close enough to when you need to enqueue the next set. So uh, just, just some food for thought, I guess. All right. Cheers.